Today, we are going to talk about how to play soft and sexy low notes on the saxophone. Those are called subtones, and they are oftentimes used when you are playing a ballad instead of playing full volume low notes. When you play full volume low notes in a ballad, it just kind of sound harsh. You need that soft and subtle subtone. Those notes sound subtle, soft, and airy, and have a really mellow, laid-back sound to them. Before we dive into the tutorial, if you are a regular viewer of my tutorials, you can tell this is not my regular studio at my house in Baltimore. I'm currently in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, and I am renting studio practice space in a music store. Because of that, you are most likely going to hear some music sounds, maybe some guitars and that kind of stuff in the background. And there is a motorcycle repair shop right next door. So every now and then you might hear a little bit of motorcycle revving and occasional horn beep. But the show must go on. All right, let's talk about how to play subtones. And the good news is there are only four steps. The first thing that you need to do to make your subtone sound really good is change your embouchure. Now that's something that saxophone players rarely recommend when it comes to doing pretty much anything on the saxophone. But when it comes to subtones, that is something that you need to do because you need to slow that air down and get a little bit less of the reed vibrating. Now, the way you do that is to move your chin back and down like you're saying the word foo, foo. I know it's weird, it looks a little weird. I'm a little bit closer so you can see it but we want that chin to come down, get a little bit flat and come back a little bit. Foo. I know it's a little weird, but if you get your chin in that foo position, it takes your lower lip and it brings it uh, forward on your mouthpiece. So a little less reed is vibrating and it brings it down so there's even less pressure. So that's gonna help you get that subtone, subtone sound is by bringing your chin down and back in the foo position. This is what it sounds like. If I don't have my chin and the lower lip in that position, it's just regular sounding low notes. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play some low notes and I'm gonna go in and out of that foo position and you'll hear the difference. So what's happening is when I go out of the food position, my lower lip is moving forward just a little bit on the reed, letting it vibrate more. When it vibrates more, I get a bigger, fuller sound. When it comes to subtones, I don't want a bigger, fuller sound. I want the sound to be airy and the air to not be, uh, and the air to be more spread out. What are some of your favorite melodies to play on the saxophone where you can use subtones? For me, one of my all-time favorite tunes is In a Sentimental Mood, and I use subtones all over that song. And another one would be Lover Man. That is also a great tune to use subtones in. So leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite subtone saxophone melodies are. The next step is to slow down your air. You don't want really focused air moving fast because if you do that, if you're putting that kind of air into your saxophone, you're gonna get a big fat full sound. So for this, we wanna slow down the air and try to spread it out a little bit. If I have my chin and lower lip in the foo position, and I don't slow down the air, it's not gonna quite sound like a subtone. A 
like that is softer, but it's still a really full tone. And when we're going for subtones, we want more of an airy tone. <laughs> So you want to bring that chin down and back and slow down your air so that it's a little bit more spread out and you have that breathy, airy, sexy, subtle sound. If you'd like to learn some more saxophone specific specialty skills, in every pathway course in my sax school, I have a section called Sax Basics, which teaches some of these types of specialty skills at different levels. So we go over things like, of course, subtones, growling, thwop tonguing, vibrato, super scoops, overtones, all kinds of really specific things to the saxophone to make what you play sound a whole lot more interesting. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in adding into your saxophone toolbox, then stop by the Scott Paddock Sax School today. I'll put a link in the video description. Now that we've got the sound down for subtones, the next step is to slow down your vibrato. As you can hear, it's just kind of like a slow spin. It doesn't get faster, although it can in certain situations. But for the most part, your vibrato when it comes to subtones is going to be slow. It's going to be part of the note and it's going to have like this labored spinning sound. <laughs> Now, the way I'm creating that vibrato is with small bursts of air. That is not the way you normally do vibrato. That is the opposite of the way you normally do vibrato. You'll usually get yelled at by your saxophone teacher if you do vibrato that way. But when it comes to subtones, that is the perfect way to do vibrato. And it's going to make it sound really good and like a natural part of the note. And the last step is to start the note with your air. Now, normally we would never start with the air. We would always start with the tongue, but for subtones, you want to have that gradual start. Like you're saying, ha, ha. So you're kind of sneaking into the note and you're gradually speeding up the, the air until the note actually sounds. If I were playing those notes not using subtone, of course, I would start them with my tongue. But that sounds way too harsh for subtones, so we're going to start the note by gradually increasing the air. Now, another thing I should mention is if you play a lot of subtones, your mouthpiece is going to get spitty because you're kind of doing everything a little bit different and slowing everything down. So there's going to be a lot of spit or uh, condensation that accumulates in your mouthpiece. So you're going to have to suck that spit out way more often than normal. That's why you always need to keep your mouthpiece clean. In addition to starting notes with your air, you're also going to articulate with your air. So it's going to be like a little burst of air just to make the note sound a little stronger. When we slow the air down that much and you're taking in less mouthpiece, it's way harder to tongue to uh, separate those notes. So you're just going to do a little burst of air. Again, this is only true for subtones. Take a listen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now, when you are subtoning, you are not going to be separating those notes very much. They're mostly going to be connected. They're going to be slurred. But if you do want to have a little bit of a separation between two notes, you're going to do that with a small burst of air to give it a little bit of a tongue or an accent. But again, you're only going to do this when you're playing low subtones. Now, let's talk about the range for subtones. 
A really good rule of thumb is just your right hand low notes all the way down to a B flat. So F sharp, F, E, D sharp, D, all the way down to your low B flat. You can play subtones on G, G sharp, and A, but especially if you're just starting off, I would stick to the lower notes um, and not go any higher than your low notes in your right hand. Now here are a couple disclaimers. When it comes to subtones, they don't work well at all if you have a hard read. They work even better if you have a soft read. Now, you're not going to put on a soft read just to play subtones, so your regular, regular read will work. But if you have a hard or new read, subtones will be much more difficult. And if you have a read that's broken in a little bit or even a little bit soft, they're going to be even easier. If your saxophone has a bunch of leaks in them, subtones are going to be way more difficult because you're already losing air before you get down to the bottom and you are moving your air into the saxophone slower, so it might not make it all the way down to the bottom. So if you have leaks in your saxophone, chances are subtones are going to be really difficult to play. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. I hope that you can now use subtones in your saxophone melodies and solos. And if you would like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School.